The challenge of spanning the sea that divides Britain from mainland Europe has beaten engineers for over a century. Practical problems and past politics have stood in the way. Today, that's all changed. Now it's within our power to master the channel. But which way shall we choose? A tunnel? An open bridge? Or something in between? But there is another way. One that offers the shelter of a tunnel, the simplicity of a bridge, and a bonus so valuable, it puts it in a class of its own. Eurolink, a sweeping silver arc, 27 miles long from Dungeness to Cap Grenet, a work to rival the greatest engineering achievements of the past. Eurolink is a glazed structure as pleasing to the eye as it will be to travel through. Within its smooth aerodynamic shell, the upper deck will carry four lanes of motorway in each direction, with hard shoulders for emergencies, and two extra lanes for services, access and maintenance. So private motorists could travel across the channel enjoying a superb panoramic vista, and yet all the time being sheltered from the elements. The views are treat shared too by pedestrians and cyclists who have their own lanes. The second deck below will be for all commercial vehicles and rail traffic. So Eurolink performs all the functions demanded of a channel crossing, and more, because there's that bonus we mentioned. It's to be found in the piers supporting the bridge, each one contains a turbine driven by the tides to generate valuable electricity. Using technology similar to that of the Thames Barrier, a rotating sill, raised and lured with the tides, directs a faster flow of water onto the turbines. The location, Dungeness to Cap Grenet, is the point of maximum tidal strength in the channel. So from the time the first piers are in place, they will generate electricity. When it's fully functional, Eurolink will yield thousands of megawatts, enough to power several major cities. What's more, it's clean, ecologically acceptable power. But how will Eurolink achieve this? Well, construction will be simplified by a modular approach. Prefabricated sections will be built on both sides of the channel, creating new jobs in the semi-desolate areas of Dungeness and Cap Grenet. Engineers and builders will pioneer link techniques that could be applied throughout the world. It could even be one of the alternatives to nuclear energy. The structure will therefore literally generate revenue, making it a bridge with a bonus. Eurolink offers a new source of hydroelectric power. Revenue from Eurolink's generators could make the bridge scheme largely self-financing. The enclosed design keeps Eurolink travellers sheltered from the elements. With the two decks, private and commercial traffic are separated for convenience and safety while the modular construction could create long-term employment. Crowning this bold and innovative structure would be a conference centre with restaurants and a helipad to provide a symbolic mid-channel venue for business exchanges, Eurolink style. Altogether, Eurolink provides a golden opportunity to master the channel with a scheme that meets our long-term transport needs and also contributes to the nation's energy resources. In the great tradition of civil engineering, any cross-channel scheme must be a legacy for the future. Only Eurolink, we suggest, is the solution worthy of the 21st century and beyond.